It's me that they already asked me and let me no answer. Um, it's me. They always ask me. Hello, baby. How are you? So I'm coming. Just, just hold on. One. Dial star seven eight five hatch. Chat with Z on your chat number plus two three four nine zero. I'm coming, I'm with you. You can hear me, Abby. Visit my MTN NG app. Just hold on. Five. You can hear me, Abby. Yes, I can hear you. So just hold on. I have the national identification number. I have a compulsory store for new How do you say that? Thank you for visiting the MTN website to book an appointment. What are we doing today? Okay, then. Um, I hate to sit, but we sit. We sit today. But it's good to see you. It's good to see you too. How are you? <laughs> I'm all scared my life. <laughs> Can you hear me though? Tapa. Hello? I've come you. I've come you. I've come. I've come. Moti, Gabe, Kiki. Signal the night 1.3 Lagos Stocks. My name is Adeomi Ushudi, and this morning we'll go straight to Signal's business. We'll pitch and sell in 30 seconds. Your name, your location, what do you sell? What's unique? What's special about your product, your service? And how can we reach you? Your WhatsApp line is fine. Please, if you have called before, Victor and, and the money, like you wish not call you. Let new fresh people call us 009 234 Signals on it's 1.3 Lego Socks. My name is Adion Yoshudu. Still on Signals Business. Your name, your location, what do you sell? What's unique? What's special about your product? And how can we reach you? Hello, good morning. <laughs> Please reduce the volumes of your radio set 009 234 Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello, good morning. Your name or where you calling? Good morning. good morning. My name is John Amesha. I'm calling from home. I'm calling from um, the state furniture and decoration. We are in store. It's a time delivery company. We deliver on time and we take customer consideration. And our office is at um, Okombo Road. Our phone number, that's our WhatsApp number, is 080. Six two four nine seven four. Thank you. Hello, good morning. There is zero nine one nine one three nine one three. 
0092-0913. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Your name or where are you calling us from? My my name is Adi Ogumbayo. I'm calling from Igbe Lagos. Okay, what are we saying? Our product and services include the making of the cake mm. or for any occasion. We sell the donuts, hot dogs, hot dogs, shishi, and we do training as well. And we are reachable on 081 Thank you. 0151519130 0151509130 Signals Business. We'll repeat and sell in 30 seconds. The numbers to call is 0091913913. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Your name and where are you calling us from? Please do call us back, 009-234-5913-009-222-0913-0151519130. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Karim. I'm calling from uh, Asia. Yeah, what are we selling? We understand the language of the uh, business of business. Thank you. Hello, good morning. <laughs> Signals Business, your name and where you calling us from? Your name, your location, what do you sell? What's special about your product, your service, and how can we reach you? 009 191 3913 Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, your name or where are you calling us from? I'm Latana, Okay, what's what is Latana selling? Okay, so how can we reach you? How can we reach you? What's up, line? Okay, it's way more. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Hey, hello. Hello, I can hear you. Please, this is Oh. Hello, good morning. I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Mom? I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, me, I'm calling you from the National Theater here. What's your Thank name? Thank you, Block 5. My name is Peter. What are we selling? All right, we are into entertainment and marketing. We have um, uh, clowns here, DJs, hype men. We have musicians um, here, dancers and uh, models that we put together to host events to uh, great marketing, road shows for products. That is to say, people that have new products on market, we help them to brand their event and do proper marketing for them to actually uh, make a sales okay, so and make their market to be you? known. How can we reach you? Um, my, I'm using the same phone where the number is now yes, call to us. call you. I will extract the number and I'll test it via this no, number to you. call the number. Do you know the number by heart? Uh, the number by heart. Yes. Your number. I'm trying to get the number by heart now. If you have the number, call us back. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll... Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, your number, where you calling us from? Yes, am I on to Talk uh, yes. business pitch? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. My name is Good Motive, and I'm calling you from last two Igondo Road here at Tobado Race. Right, so, on Good Motive Talk, we sell satellite decoder dish 
for watching free to air satellite TV channels that you are not paying monthly or yearly subscriptions. Watch satellite channels without paying monthly subscriptions. So how can we because, okay, so by you can reach me through my phone number 080-649-60093. Thank you. Signals Business, or we pitch and sell in 30 seconds. Your name, your location, what do you sell is unique or special about your product? And how can we reach you? The numbers to call is 015151913. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. Your name away from My name is Richard. Uh -huh. I'm calling from the supermarket. Okay, we sell you. Okay, I sell women's wear, women underneath. So, how can we reach you? Oga? Okay. Please call us back 009 191913. 009 Hello, good morning. No. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. All right, it is the same guy that called from the National Theater MTAC Block 5. Okay. Give us your um, number. The, the phone number is 091 351 Okay, then. Thank you. Signals business, your name, your location, what do you sell, what's unique, what's special about your products, and how can we reach you, your WhatsApp line. The numbers to call is 009-191-3913. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Your relative and friend, Ikechuku John, one of the kids in the you. Please, can you have a question from your friend, Ikechuku John, one of the kids in the Otherwise, you block his Vivian. Okay. There is 091913913 for people who want to call in to sell their businesses for the sake of God. This spamming calls. People you, you loan money and then people start to call. It's embarrassing. Anyway, 015151913 or 0151519913. Signals business will repeat and sell in 30 seconds. I have one minute to go. 009191. 3913-009-222-0913. One more minute to go. It's going to be our last caller for this segment. 015151913 or 0151509913. Okay, then. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. It's okay. Have you been disconnected because you didn't link your national identification number to your MTN number? Don't worry. If you already have your NIN, here are five ways to reconnect. One, dial star 785 hash. Two, text your national identification number NIN to 785. Three, chat with Ziggy on WhatsApp number plus 234-9033-00001. Four, visit my MTN NG app. Or five, visit www.mtn.ng. If you don't have a national identification number, just walk into any MTN store or NIMSI center near you or visit the MTN website to book an appointment. What are we doing today? There's a new cuisine in town. A glass of wine, a cup of coffee, and if you're like me, a glass of smoothie. With signals served on Lagos Talks 91.3 every Saturday at 10 a.m. Your mind will dream again. Ha, ha. 
signals on its 1.3 Lagos stocks this morning. Well, we'll continue for signals business next week, Saturday. God willing. We're talking touching lives through social entrepreneurship this morning. I have with me, um, she's a social entrepreneur with over six years of experience spanning education, development, nonprofit management, and community engagement. Um, in 2020, she became a youth lead ambassador representing Nigeria. The following year, she became a youth lead peer ambassador and giving mentorship to ambassadors under her. She also leads a project team in a thriving tech organization. She's been given several awards, some of which include the Lagos State Ministry of Youth and Social Development Award for her selfless service to girls at the center. She's, she's the, well, okay, she's currently the executive director for Lend a Hand for Development of Africa, a nonprofit organization in Lagos, Nigeria, dedicated to supporting families in undeserved communities in Africa, starting with Nigeria immediate community with educational scholarships and a blend of supplementary initiatives, which include the food drive and pad for a girl drive. The various projects from the organization encourage children to go and stay in school, thereby reducing poverty, illiteracy in local communities. Welcome to Signals Abimbola Ajala. Hello, good morning. <laughs> Good to have you this morning. Well, we're talking okay. about show entrepreneurs. We're touching lives. You have um okay, so um a brief about Ambimbola before I start to ask her all the questions. I, I one day ran I was at the market and I was trying to get um and this was six years ago. <laughs> I was trying to get pampas for my nephew and then she goes i said well i don't know how to buy anything no and she goes let's go let's go let's go and i'm like ah, this sort of stock and i'm grateful for that um help now it's not it's not too far that you have taken on that singular act and gone to improve all that children's lives so we're talking social entrepreneur this morning and you're touching lives has that been for you so far it's been a very fruitful um journey um if i say so myself <laughs> it's it's of course not without its um many um challenges but it's been very fruitful it's been very i feel blessed if i can put it that way i feel blessed to be a part of people's narratives and journeys it's not every time that god puts people in such positions to do things so i feel like i mean i'm just enjoying myself and then just mm -hmm. doing what i need to do yeah <laughs> Okay, now as a social entrepreneur with over six years of experience, what are the common community-based challenges that you have had to solve? Oh, well. <laughs> oh yeah, we can hear it. Okay, <laughs> so from so, that first child that you saw that caught your heart. Um, I have quite a number, right? Um, and that's because the communities that we visit or adopt, as it were, are the core of what we do at Lendian. So I would start with how the scholarship scheme was birthed and how the food drive started. Um, so um, I knew that I there was an educational inequality. It, it wasn't far off, right? Um, and this is just to snowball into how the whole organization started, I want to believe. Um, so I lived in the Butemeta area of Lagos and I schooled in Festac. There was a bit of discrepancy. There was a difference. So when I got to a Butemeta, I'd see I witnessed young girls drop out of school, become teenage mothers, young boys get into courtism. It wasn't like it wasn't prevalent at that time in Festac, but I attended one of the very good schools there. So it was a shock to me to see girls leave, leave school. And, and for me, I just knew that when I got to certain places in my life, or a certain place in my life, I wanted to pay it back, right? Because I had a very tenacious mom who just felt that it was education or nothing. So she would deprive herself of parties, assure bees, apologies to all the weddings she couldn't make because <laughs> Johnson, just to make sure that we went to school and stayed in school. So um, on one of those days, my mom had been posted to a local church, right? And then she just said in one of our morning devotions that, ah, that she really wants to help some people, yada, 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 and stuff. So I just randomly, I'd be doing stuff in schools, going to when I was an undergrad at the Oba Family Awolowo University, I've been doing stuff, right? Going to secondary schools and talking to them about career choices and things like that. So 
I just said, okay, let me um, see this family you're talking about, right? So I went over to them and Takwa, I was humbled. It was a one room. There were like eight children. The dad was on the sick bed with diabetes. And the mom was just trying to navigate life. And you know, say me, I had the bag of goodies, but what struck me, Tapa, is the well-mannered children she had. They didn't hustle for the food, they greeted me. It was just so cultured. And I just looked at them, all those eight children, none of them were in school at that point. And I said to myself, no, this can't go to waste. We have to do something. I didn't have the money or the resource then, but my pastor, Pastor Yemi, always says this thing, that when God puts it in your heart, he will put it in your hand. So just talking to some people and then just, you know, just very passionate, oh, this family, the other, the other. And then someone said, okay, you know what? Can we um, get the um, school fees quotation and things like that? And I'm like, yeah, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I went to school and then I spoke to the principal and I'm like, I want to get a child in school first. I'm an organization. So can I get a bit of discount? And he was like, mm, okay, this, this, this. And we got that one of the children in, in that family into school. That was seven years ago. Takwa is in SS3 right now. He's preparing to write his jam next year. His older brother, we took his older brother to after we found, because he started from primary school. So we started from primary four with him. So we not eight children. We're taking one. Okay, let's do one more. Mm -hmm. And we took his um, older brother. His older brother just finished from secondary school now, had the jams of 250 distinction in his work six years with us, right? So it's just been a blessing. That's how the scholarship scheme came about. And then now we have children in Lagos, in Bado, in Korodu, Agege, Suruleri, all over. Um, and then the food drive. So I do this impromptu visit to schools, right? I'll just not tell the principal, not tell the teachers, not the students, and then just go and visit our beneficiaries. And in one of those occasions, one of these children was sitting in school. What? After paying school fees. I'm like, no, this, this, no, this is not happening. So I went over to um, the community to look for him. Mm. I couldn't find this boy. <laughs> so we kept looking. Is Even his mom didn't know where he was. And finally, we found him, a seven-year-old at that point, in the midst of boys who were smoking Indian hemp. And I was but seven. Seven? Yes. And I was very distraught. I was like, what's happening? You know, I was, I, 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 and then the boys wanted to fight me. How can I take the boy away from them? You know how your boss say, any to leru, lo leru? So they didn't want to give me the boy back <laughs> with the fact that you know, they were the ones who fed him the afternoon right he ran errands for them in exchange for food and at that point we knew that we needed to do something for our beneficiaries we needed to get them monthly food supplies to not just discourage them from running errands for food which can you know lead to them getting into back gangs cultism and things like that but also to improve learning outcomes so the challenges in communities vary it varies from social economic um, even religious right um, sometimes you have to convince people to say i would rather the girl child um come to school they want to push the boys and then have the girls up do you understand so it's a lot it's um sometimes they're just dealing with people who don't see the value of education right so it's you, you pay school fees if you check my social media i said um we have to confirm I was listening to some of the things that we do when school, a new session starts. And I said that we have to confirm if children are in school because we've had funny cases. And some people were like, what funny cases? We've paid school fees and children don't turn up in school. Oh. Right. So it's a lot, right? From now, now, let, me, let, me, let me stop you a little bit and ask you, when we pay school fees, when you have taken the step to pay a child's school fees, why do you think they don't show up at school? Um, so it it varies. Give me a, of, give me one case that you were really worried about. This boy, right? This same boy, and he didn't show up in school because he wanted food. Wow! And he looked at me in the face. I said, "My mama, not give me food." 
Wow. He said it to me after I, I dragged him away from those boys. Finally, me and those boys came into a consensus and I, I apologized. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have dragged him like that um, in front of you. Maybe we should have had a conversation first and then we came into a consensus and said, hey, now, now you did talk and then all that. And then he looked at him, my mama don't give me food. Wow. And all things learn. And it was just very unruly. He was hungry. <laughs> and then, like they say, an hungry man is an angry man. Mm-hmm. He was seven years old, but mm-hmm. that void of hunger. Hmm. there to be filled right so there is that there's some people that don't go to school because whether we like it or not they would rather learn a skill than go to a formal school so that's where you have to conduct your assessments to say what would you what, what do you want to do we have those conversations say okay i don't really to like school like that i won't learn tailoring right so it's it's not how we now have the structure around it to say you can learn tailoring, but how do we now teach you financial literacy? How we do we get you mentored? So you're not just that tailor down the road, you're equipped for the global market. You can make a dress for Takwa. Takwa went to work, do you understand? Because it's beautiful, right? Because it's excellent, do you understand? So that's just a number of reasons. Some parents will just rather tell you straight up, say, waiting the happen for school. Straight up, say their children want to also. Straight up, do you understand? We have a case right now we are dealing with. After we sent her to learn a skill, the fa- we call to monitor. So what's happening? Father said she wants to go and also. Also, so if they say also, what do they mean by also? Look for a manual job to support them because they just learned a skill now. They have, they need materials. They need to take time to get customers. They don't have that. There's no patience for that. So they want to look for a menial job. And that's, and I'm really concerned about this case because it's a girl. And before you know it- How old is she? Two, she's 16. Now, be- hold on, hold on. Now she's 16 years old and the father is telling you that she has to go and hustle. The next question I'm asking is, what's the father doing? What's the mother doing? The mother is dead. Okay. The father has lost his job. One of these security guard job. So okay. it just, it's tough. In, in slum communities, unfortunately, we are dealing with a mentality and a mindset of extreme intergenerational poverty. Wow. And I say that with all respect. So it's it's not just poverty of one generation. It's <laughs> a million. You understand? So they've not one of the things we're doing at land Day and is to provide a vision and a narrative different from what they've seen so this guy for example the one who is past his jam is like a beacon of hope if they go university it has not happened in his family before his mom came for his valedictory service and she couldn't help herself do you understand we had to make sure that she's there do you understand let us see what it felt like mm. and she couldn't believe it like he now won the best commercial student. Do you understand? So it's a different narrative from the, someone who was, they, they are bloodlines of people who have just been into farming, you know, going to the bush to cut wood. That's all they know. You now come and introduce cooling, education, STEM. It's like from where to where? <laughs> you know, they are not can conceive it yet. And that's the one of the, things I love about Lendy and it's the intense mentorship It's like sometimes we take them to meet some of the celebrities comedians so they can see that there is life outside this slum because when somebody leaves a public secondary school he doesn't even care for his YX results he just goes on the streets and stuff so you they now see an ID who has gone through six years Mm. who has done this who is waiting on the asshole strike so it can get into school it does something to their brain hmm. and that's the plan so it's it's poverty it's it's cultural issues it's generational background it's lack of a narrative of something that works hmm. now how do we have um uh, you've gotten id his name is id right yeah now, how do we get id to tell more of his peers that they should go to school so um one of the things we're working at um this um next quarter and early next year by god's grace is to have um this kind of um i don't want to use the word conference but something that is like a shine on 
mm-hmm. where ID shines. They see him, they've heard the gist, it has gone around the community. However, we are not looking at him. And that's why it hurts that this ASU strike is taking place. Wow. Because one of the things we wanted to do. The government answers the ASU strike. I, I really <laughs> hope. Them, it's, it's, a, it's, it's painful because it's six months now. Yeah on strike now for for id you know that there's that case where and well done well done there's that case where um somebody breaks forth let's use that um let's use that tone somebody breaks forth and and his peers are like now only you and then they try to suck him back into it so how do we take him away from that circle right it's a becoming of oak already how do we take him from that circle so that they don't suck him back in I think ID is just one of the blessed kids. When he got to JS3, he got a family who wanted to adopt him. Okay, good. good. He, he's not in the slum. Uh-huh. He goes there weekends. They see him weekends. That's where the gist even went around that, oh, he did this because he took his wife results there to show his mom and things like that. Yes, to Bugada. <laughs> but he isn't there. However, I I understand your question, and it's baffling because I would say this also out of a lot of respect here, that a lot of them also got this chance. Hmm. There is, you know, I said something to you about um, this girl where the father said, there's this instant gratification, validation, instant money that they need. Why you can't blame them? We also have to teach them that life is process. Right. I've been running this organization for close to 10 years of my life. Right. I did not get on Lagos stocks on the first day. Yeah. Right. So it's a lot of walking through your life and understanding that you cannot just blow because you just learned a skill in catering. Do you understand me? So that is something that Tapa, mm. it's not a it's not a yeah. one-day job. It's not a one-day job. It's a lot. I see a lot of them in that this particular community fall by the wayside. Some got pregnant. In fact, there was one that really hurt me because we got a family that wanted to keep her. Hmm. The family wanted to send her to learn a skill. Guess what she came back to tell us? Hmm. That they want to use her as housemaid. <sighs> you were going to stay in a free room, just you. But you went back to the slum. No, no, got pregnant. No. She got pregnant. Yes, she oh. has to keep by the way right now. Um, well, I I hope uh, we all hope that she's able to transfer um, the little light that she's gotten from you to her children. Now, um, before we continue our conversation, it signals on ninety one point three. We're talking touching life through social entrepreneurship with Abimbola Jala, and um, she's giving us case studies by case studies. If you have questions or comment, can be whatsapp or call us 0092345913 or call us 0091913913 now um let's talk about the part for a girl tell us about it so um right now we all know how expensive it is but that's not where it stemmed up for me right um so i'll give you a very funny story one when i <laughs> it took me well want to share okay. but yeah so Are you comfortable sharing yeah okay Go ahead, please. <laughs> so it was it was a while back in secondary school and um i didn't have pads so i did a very quick dodgy thing i went into the hostel when i got in school i said i just saw my period i didn't want like are you serious something i don't see from house <laughs> but i couldn't i didn't i couldn't afford it right so my friends were very you know tick 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 i took for more than one person so that it would last me through the whole period and as i sit back in retrospect you know it was a cry for help it was it was it did something to me Throughout those four days, I wasn't myself. I shut my self-esteem was shattered. I was like, what if I didn't get this? You know, it was just a lot for me at that point. So when I was in uni, I I went out to buy something. This young girl came to meet me and said, Auntie, no verso. If have you followed you go collect pad? I'm like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you had to so, come back. 
and then I just gave her the old pack. She said, ah, just one is fine. I said, won't you use next time? So I gave her the pack and I said, you can go. And I just knew it. Yeah, it was an awake moment. Like, that's it. Yeah, this is your time. So I, I used to tell my friends and like, you know, my name is Abimbola. And I'm like, if you're Abimbola's friend, you know, you should be able to do something. So I had people who give me 500 this, this, this. And we started going to schools in Osho State, right? Moremi High School was one of our points um, of call there. We just, and then it was just, it just blew my mind how girls, it wasn't just the part, it was the questions. Mm. It was the vaginal discharge issues they couldn't answer. It was, why am I having this, um, should I have um, sex on my period? And you're like, oh, you're having sex already? Okay, <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> Do you understand? It was different health issues that, you know, because there wasn't wash facilities also, Remember, no toilets, no access to good water. So the cleanup was bad. It was, so we have a documentary on this. I hope I can say this. And it's called I Bleed Different. So if you go on YouTube, you'll see how we just spoke to different girls to get their opinion on this. So it's a lot of issues. It wasn't just the pad. It was how to even dispose the pads. One of the girls in the documentary said she had to wait when it's night, then she will go to the bush to throw it away so the boys will not see her. Imagine going to the bush and then she gets beaten by a snake or she gets raped on the way. So we're dealing with just not, oh, let's gather and parapo and give people pads and look good on social media. It's that mm. they, an epidemic. It happens. And girls need to be taught. They need hygiene and menstrual information right. They need counselors they need doctors right to look into them have checks and then you know yes of course the sanitary pads the um panty liners and things like that so it's holistic for us it's from education to actual giving them what they need through that time of the month wow uh... <laughs> Now, here's what's running through my mind that one is we're well, hoping that pad is not expensive, that it's very affordable. But then it's one thing for them to have pad. It's another thing for them not to be ashamed that they're on their monthly period. Like, you know, gone are days where you need to go to the chemist and say, okay, I want to buy something. You cannot, and you have to wait for everybody to disappear first. <laughs> yeah. So how, how are we able to communicate to young girls that there's nothing to be ashamed of? Let me even, let me bust your head that far. We went to a school and some of the girls didn't want to collect the pads. Ha. Huh. Because the guys were watching. It, so we have to start kissing the boys. So even kissing the boys is good. <laughs> is We have now learned that when we're having our stuff, we have to create a time, get a class. The school didn't have the all. That particular school didn't have the all. So it was the assembly ground. And they are in court. Boyfriends were there sitting down like, I've been talking about with the boyfriends. <laughs> Do you understand? So it's the shame and stigma is unnecessary, but isn't the education goes beyond the girls. It's the boys. It's even their teachers. Yes, teachers. It's how teachers relate with them. It's what their teachers say to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this particular school, I... I was privileged to teach there to my NYSE. I know that the restrooms are Bad. deployed. Bad work. So how, how would this girl change? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So they are stained, there isn't cardigan to cover up. It's horrendous, to okay. say the least. Now, because time is not my friend, um, let me quickly rush you through. Now, in 2020, you were the youth lead, um, youth lead ambassador. How did it influence your decisions? And how did that feel? It felt good. <laughs> and I think that prayers are answered. Yeah, that's one of the things I learned to process for me, right? Um, it's like God took me on a journey of certain old ones, right? You know, you see people in my sector and there's a lot of oh up here and there. And I didn't have that. But it was like God wanted me to do the work. Hmm. God wanted me to labor in the work. God wanted me to see and feel their pulse some more. So when I got the opportunity to, um, as the youth lead ambassador, it was humbling for me. It was like, 
I get this global recognition. Are you joking? <laughs> but it also taught me, I met like amazing people from South Africa, from Pakistan, and then we still have relationships now. Like it strengthened my global resolve. One of the partnerships we have in South Africa was for my sister from that cohort, right? So it's like I had people or I have people in my life now that we can hold hands together when the road seems bummy, tough, and then we can say, you know what, it happens everywhere, you know. She just had a match in South Africa for calling on the government to give free sanitary pads, and I am, I mean, oh, of it. Do you understand? Call, call our, our <laughs> Oh, and they listen they sent a letter back you know the celebration and talks now so i'm excited about that so becoming the youth leader ambassador first female for nigeria was you know what and that's my first so <laughs> it was yeah it was it was it was just it was beautiful for me it was now um you know we have different funny sets of um now let me read it like this because that's what we wrote down. There are a lot of fraudulent organizations that seek relief materials from international international or national organizations. And this has made quite a lot of people, it made it difficult for people to trust um, people without proper regulations. How do you, how do people, when they ask you and you go to their houses to convince them that they should release their children, what do they ask you? So we've been in communities where they've asked us if we're the government. <laughs> what political party or come on <laughs> do you understand so we've had people say that to us um, we've had people who want money right and you know so it's different um we've had um people want us to do initiatives that suit them so a community leader can say oh fine i'll tell my people about this but you know you my to children to be the ones to benefit first and you know it's 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 different um we take the good and the bad we take all these lessons and it helps us to know how to navigate each community because each community is different mm. so some communities are they've seen it all mm. they've seen people it's like pure water to them they're like mm, oh we'll come again mm. do you understand so it's how we let them know we're different. It's how we share our success story with them to say that community, there are four people in school. There are ah, four for six years. Hmm. Uh, these ones that came here like this, they paid school fees, they put us on social media and there's nothing. Hmm. Do you understand? Is hmm. that we can share our story with them, not just even stories of what we have done. It's stories of our personal journey and let them know that when they see me, for example, say, ah, auntie, auntie, it's all fine. Mm. And I'm like, I used to live in the Wooden Town somewhere down, down. Let me not call the name. And then they, they are shocked. They are like, they like, he was, oh, John Way, Wooden I'm like, yeah, that's the plan, right? So you can also come out of whatever slum and you can make a meaning of yourself. And that is not to say Wooden is bad. It's just where I eat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get that. <laughs> Okay, um, tell us about the Lagos State Ministry of Youth and Social Development Award for her selfless service to girls at the center. I used to work um, at a correctional center, right? And it was one of the most intense journey of my life because these girls are from everywhere. Girls they picked from the streets, girls who they caught in a raid with boys. It, it's just different, right? So it was introduced in programs. We had the good people. Um, I don't know if I can mention their name, but we had some really amazing people who the organization gave us their doctors and nurses to come and have a psychological evaluation of the girls. We introduced tailoring. Um, it was a mathematics class where the girls wrote exams. It was just a very intense period of my life to see that these girls are better than where they are, right? It's, it's to see that they get better integrated into the society when they come out of the center. And I'm very grateful that the legal state government counted me worthy to get that award. Okay. Now, you know, when we're talking about that seven-year-old boy who looked at you and said, Auntie, I never chop, right? As, um, now there's a Yoruba word for it, but as our street brothers, the brothers on the street, those guys, have they called you to say, okay, I've been bolao, there's some children that needs to go to school. Have you had that? 
Yeah. They say it to us, um, ah, uh, my brother to won't go to school, though, this, this, this. However, um, we have um, a needs assessment that we conduct because we have donors' money that we have to account for. Mm-hmm. And we realize that some of them just say it because it's just wishy washy for them. Mm-hmm. Just, and they don't understand the in depth of what we're doing. So it's just some of them are even capable. Their parents are, can send them through at least a government school. Do you understand? So why deprive people who are orphans or fatherless or motherless? Do you understand? So we have to look at their situation critically before we now take them, onboard them to say, okay, yeah. Do you understand? It's different from one of the girls on our scholarship scheme whose mom is dead and the father left her for the grandma. Wow. Grandma was taken out to a school where the church was funding. And the church says, oh, we can't fund this anymore. Right. And the girl was kept to. That girl takes preeminence over any other person at that point. Do you understand? And this is our third session with us, best overall student in our class for three years. I cannot believe at some point in her life she had to drop out of school. So it's things like that that we consider before we now take on or onboard certain children. Yes, sir. Okay, then. Now, will you tell us um, how many people, how many children benefit from these scholarships per year and how are they selected? So our selection process is very direct. We don't sit in our houses <laughs> because we, like I said, we have donors money to account for, so we can't afford to be scammed. So one of the things that we do is we interact with religious leaders. When we find out, for example, um, when we go to communities to organize um, pro- for projects or events and things like that, we interact with community leaders, with religious leaders. So when I go to a community and I'm in a church, I'm asking questions like, who are the orphans in this church? Who, um, who are the children who's dropped out? Is We have to ask deliberate questions in these communities and then these answers help us to navigate. As regards the children we onboard every year, it's different. Um, Sometimes it's it could be five in a session, it could be more than that. It just varies as much as what we get. So if we do get more donors, right, we're working on a very amazing partnership now. I can't wait to tell you all about it. <laughs> and not just from Lagos, but people in the north, right? It's I'm very particular about girls in the north and things like that. So yeah, it it varies. It's what we have equates <laughs> who we can onboard basically because the scholarship scheme is very intense. We're taking care of their everything, PTAs, school bags, excursions, everything. So for such intensity, we need funds and resources for it. So as much as we would love to do a lot, we're just taking our time and onboarding as we get resource basically. Now, do you have, um, you've talked about need assessment um, tests that you run. Do you also have that for the people that want to donate? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we have, and it's it's more like we have this discussion so that we are on the same page. Okay. So that we understand. I had a discussion with my friend, Tafa, my party, Amazing. for one hour. This guy was drilling the bimbo out of me but i understand he was going to drop a lump sum and he wouldn't he just needed to get clarifications and answers and i also wanted to get clarifications and answers for from him too so there are forms you have to fill our form you know even my friends feel this from they don't like it yeah shout out to you boss i know you don't like it <laughs> but you have to fill this form do you understand we get where you're living and things like that fine we've had people go to our website and donate anonymously we appreciate those also however it's important that when you th- what we're doing is the heart and core of our lives so we want to take you on a journey you can't be sending a child to school for six years and not no you do you understand? So we send report sheets, we send assessment sheets, we send graduation materials. So it feels like we are holding ants and we're taking this journey with these children. And it's so beautiful. Okay. Now you, you've told me a lot. You've told us a lot, right? Um, if you're just tuning in, it's um, Signals and we're talking, touching life through entrepreneurship with Abimbola Jala. And um, 
Okay, so how would people donate? To... So, different forms go on our website, you click on the donate button. If you're fine, I can call the numbers out now. It's right. everywhere. Right. Send us right. them on Instagram. Okay, so it's 02350. Two three eight three. Be um, wait, yo wait, we wait. Sorry, sorry. Let's start from the website first. Then okay, so the website is www.laafrica.com. L a h a f r i c a dot com. Right. So, um, you can go on Instagram, Lendi and Africa. Twitter, Lendi and Africa. So we are DM, email away, laafrica at gmail dot com and Somebody will give you a response. We are we are fast like that. <laughs> <laughs> so how many children? How many children do you want to co-opt before the end of the year? We want to have a hundred, and I know that that seems like a lot, right? Because of the process of our onboarding and how our partnership is. But fingers crossed. Hmm, I like that. Fingers crossed. Hundred <laughs> children. Hundred children. Um, earlier on in the program, you talked about intergenerational poverty. How do we gradually break that? We need to have a culture um, that allows people to allow entrepreneurship thrive. We need to have a culture that funds and prioritizes education. Okay, so we need to one, the first one is entrepreneurship. Yes, is that one. is that that woman that sells fish down the road should get access to small loans that can help her thrive, mm -hmm. right? To help her also send our children to school. We also need to break the children um, stigma around the girl child education. Takwa is there. Mm -hmm. It's twenty Takwa is there. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's huge. A, yes, is that huge? Love. Yeah, I'm shocked that. Um, some people still don't know the value of education at all, and they don't want to send and, girls to school. I'm very grateful for what um Lagos Stocks is doing and what Young and Sarah Bear is doing because the media also has a part to play, right? It's how we say these things to that man who is holding his radio and like, ah, I like the way this girl they talk, or maybe my child can do that. Mm -hmm. Do It's how we begin to spotlight things like this, other than certain um. Conversations. Yes, I my <laughs> so, so, so I would love to, as as you journey on in um providing shelter, providing pads for girls, providing schools, and getting more families to adopt children. And please, for every parent, for every family that is adopting children, we, I, I understand when somebody says that they're going to turn me to meet because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's what happens. You get mm -hmm. into somebody's house and automatically. Mm -hmm your life and and you know while it's happening physically your mind is getting mm -hmm. messed up already mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right why we get good families good people that good people that they're, they're great people who would want to help um i want that one of these one of these days that you call and say that okay you know what or should you talk about like you fondly call me um, I want you to have this young girl, have this young guy, interview this person, and let's hear the stories. I think the more stories we're able to tell, the more people are able to see that, okay, fine, we're doing something, we're doing something, and um, people need help. Of oh, course, I give the honor of my life to do that, um, like ID, I would love that the world so, hears. So what is ID now, as you speak? ID is Nikorodo, right? Um, so... Right, right now we're just waiting, like I said, on this on why on sorry on ASU so that he can resume basically. So yeah, I would love that. I love is, to hear this story. Yeah, <laughs> it, for me thinking about him, how his dad was present this minute and his dad is dead, mm. and then they had to leave that one room and go to a place on top of water. Mm. So. It's all those shifts and him staying through for six years and still emerging best students when he even when moving from a public to a private school, right? I was scared when we took that leap. 
tap. I was like, this boy should feel like this. <laughs> Maybe he should not stay in this public school or government school, as I call it. But he emerged best commercial student for three years in that school. So it's a testament to the fact that if we owe these students and by God, mm. they will be in the narrative. Okay, then. Thank you so much. My time is up. <laughs> My time is up. <laughs> Thank um, you. 100 children before the end of December, right? That's what we're, that's the goal. Thank you. So we're looking for more um, donations to be able to help you get 100 children to school. That would be amazing. I think that would be so, so amazing. Well done, Abimbola. Well, we've come to the end of the program. Till we come your way again next week, Saturday, like I always say on Signals, um, dream again, create opportunities for people like Abimbola is doing. It's creating more opportunities for children, for girls. And if you see a young girl at the chemistry, be you man or woman, um, father or mother, uncle or aunt, and she needs to get a part, please pay for her. That way you also pay it forward. She would also pay for that guy would also pay for it. And then for people to when we want to come and buy stuff at your shops, don't look at us. You know, that that there's a shame of there's <laughs> like, like, no shame in um in a guy coming to say that I want to buy a pad for my for my girlfriend, for my wife, for my sister. Please look out for us as we all look out for each other. Have a wonderful week. Create opportunities for people. And because people will be people, there are still more people who need help. Uh, Thank you. Create opportunities for them. Have a wonderful week and God bless. My love. Bye. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Thank you having Thank me. So uh, we'll talk after the program. No problem. Have fun. Love you. <laughs> okay. Brand new.